was a weekend of vigils and demonstrations in Tennessee, Michigan, New York, California, and beyond. And police brutality, justice for Tyree, what happened in Memphis. It's devastating news. I watched the video and I was just absolutely disgusted. Tyree Nichols, an unarmed black man, died after a videotape beating by police. And his death is now the latest glaring reminder that efforts in recent years to reform public policing have failed. Nationwide since 2020, police have killed roughly three people per day. Each year, the figure has been more than a thousand. Executions, which are actually sanctioned by a state or federal government, average about 20 per year. And in the case of executions, the defendants get several opportunities to appeal their punishment and have their case reviewed. Nichols was a 29-year-old skateboarder, FedEx employee, and father to a four-year-old boy. The five black officers involved in beating him were fired and have been charged with murder and other crimes. But the crimes happened despite the fact that the Memphis Police Department, for a few years now, has required all officers to undergo de-escalation training. Officers are told to limit the use of force, exhaust all alternatives before resorting to deadly force, and report all uses of force. Tennessee law also requires officers to intervene to stop abuse and report their colleagues' excessive use of force. And the Memphis Police Department is unusually transparent compared to other police departments. The Memphis Police publish accountability reports that include the race of people subjected to force each year. The reports show that black men and women were overwhelmingly targeted for rougher treatment the past three years. They were subject to nearly 86% of the recorded uses of guns, batons, pepper spray, tasers, and physical beatings. Ever since the George Floyd killing a few years ago in Minnesota, several states have passed more than 300 police reform bills. There is more civilian oversight of police, more anti-bias training, stricter use of force limits, and efforts to have alternatives to police when confronting someone suffering a mental health crisis. But again, police reforms and transparency have not significantly reduced killings by police. There is more ambitious police reform that could be done. Congress still has not passed the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. That bill would prohibit racial profiling, ban chokeholds and no-knock warrants, limit the transfer of military equipment to police, and make it easier to bring charges against police officers. But changing a rule or regulation does not change behavior. As a group of experts working to end police violence have stated, the culture of a police department has to shift into actually implementing the policies, not just saying there is a rule in place. There is a temptation to say that the police system in America is broken. But on the other hand, there is a compelling argument that the police system is not broken. It's working exactly the way as it was designed to, at the expense of black life. And in my view, after doing hundreds of reports these past few years on police interactions and law enforcement abuses of people who are unarmed and were unarmed, it seems clear to me that some marginal changes and reforms are not going to be enough. We need a fundamental transformation and overhauling of police in America. That doesn't mean defunding police, but it does mean assigning non-police officers to routine traffic stops, getting rid of qualified immunity, and taking whatever drastic steps are needed to fundamentally shift police culture. We need to create a new law enforcement culture in America that promotes freedom over fear, trust in police, and mutual respect. Anything less, and the vile, horrific pace of killings by police, We'll continue.